You think that is an important piece of living historical context uh, as the Congress decides whether to go down this, this very constitutionally drastic role of potentially considering articles of impeachment. Oh, oh definitely, Ari, because, because all of these scandals, all of these indictments, you know, they were, a lot of them were summarized in the Mueller report. And basically, ever since the Mueller report dropped, like, Congress has been waiting for Nancy Pelosi to say, get the strap, right? Like, it's time to go. We know who this guy is. It's time to escalate. It's time to move forward. And so we already know, the country knows, the voters know, the, the caucus goers in Iowa know, the, the members of Congress already know the president has engaged in impeachable behavior. The biggest impediment thus far had actually been Speaker Pelosi herself. It is amazing to me how many people, uh, McGuire, doesn't know what they're doing or doesn't know who they're a part of or doesn't know who they're responsible for. He, he says in a hearing today that the president is not part of American intelligence, which amazes me how, how the president is not part Might of American intelligence. Might be a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> actually. He, he doesn't really reflect it a lot, even though he's commander in chief. He doesn't know where Rudy Giuliani is. And the problem is, to the degree that we have foreign policy being handled, not just by Giuliani, but also people like Jared Kushner, people with all sorts of questionable or non-existent security clearances going around. And, and we have to remember, they're not just doing Donald Trump's bidding. They're exchanging information, the likes of which we don't even know what all the information is that they're offering on behalf of the president to get things done. That is the danger here. What disturbed me most about this hearing is that, is that McGuire is sitting there. He should be terrified. This is pants on fire, hair on fire kinds of situations. I said last year, Joy, I've never heard of a guy who's a one-time rapist. I've never heard of a guy who's a one-time sexual assaulter. I grew up with guys like this. He's from around this area, right? He's the fifth guy in a gang rape, okay? He's the guy who comes in after he's drunk because everybody else encourages him. He can get away with it. He's been pretty much covered his entire life. And now he's on the Supreme Court where he can move that same despicable misogynistic attitude that he's gotten away with his entirely cowardly life to the greatest misogynist of all, which is the President of the United States. I can go back. I mean, Tiffany probably doesn't remember. She's too young. But there was this guy named Thank Reagan. You. Uh, we, you know, even, <laughs> even Reagan, you know, when he was talking about the challenger, I remember as a kid, people who didn't like Reagan, like my parents, were like, okay, he said I something think. nice. Bill Clinton, people who didn't trust him, he could speak to different kinds of things. George Bush, who I think was a terrible president, occasionally sounded vaguely sincere in the face of tragedy. This president doesn't provide that emotional support for anybody. And his supporters don't care because they feel so oppressed by a world of brown and queer people that hate them, that they don't need a president to support them. They just need one who's going to strike back at those that they hate. Thanks for watching. To see more videos, click right here, right here, and subscribe.